Hello everyone and welcome to the 2018 MotoGP Esport Championship. After our first semi-final in Mazzano back in September, we're back in action once again. It's time for semi-final two and we're here at the Movistar Esports Center in Madrid. And boy, is this going to be very, very exciting. My name's Tom Brooks and alongside me for the first time and welcome here to the MotoGP yeah. Esport family, Lisa Leyland. Thanks, Tom. Welcome to everyone. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here again for the Esport Championship. We're here in lovely Madrid. As you can see, we're almost ready to start. But before we get things underway, there's one more person that we need to introduce. Thanks, Lisa. Hello, Tom. A warm welcome to the audience here in Madrid and across the globe. I'll be up here in commentary, taking you through all of the action as it unfolds in what's sure to be an exciting second semi-final. Firstly in qualifying and then in the race. We'll see you up here shortly, Tom. Yeah, thank you very much indeed there, Alex. Keep that seat nice and warm for me. Anyway, as we said, semi-final one back in September. It all kicked off there. We had drama aplenty. So let's have a look back, shall we, and see who the first six competitors that made it through to the grand final were. It is race time here in Mazzara. Christian MM17, oh, he just... takes the lead and down the first corner. Oh, oh a sort of oh, is down there. Andrew Z8 straight up the inside of Timothy McGarden. Brilliant stuff from him. Oh, and he's oh, too late. He's gone down. Oh, disaster for the reigning champion, Trestevere, a 73. What is happening in the latter stages of this one? It's getting very close and very, very exciting. It's absolutely unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Christian MM17, a brilliant race and a win for the Spaniard. A brilliant performance for him. He goes through, he takes victory here. Okay, what a race that was. Refreshing our memory there. This is what the championship looks like right now. The fastest six players in the first semi-final we played in Mazzano. The reference name of Christian, MM was the championship runner-up last year and won the first semi-final we celebrated in Italy. The next five players who will accompany him will be Andrew ZH, Luigi 48 GP, Timothy McGarden 61, Adrian 26 and Ellie Ghost 555. Tom, it definitely was a good one, wasn't it? Uh, as you say, Lisa, an absolute cracker we had for semi-final one back in Mazzano. Made my way up to the commentary box. Alex alongside me, as you said, dramatic race. Christian MM17 romping off into the distance. However, drama. Last year's champion didn't make the cut. Yes, problems for Trastevere in the first semi-final. He could only manage eighth position. But of course, a second opportunity for him. A second set of four challenges taking his place here in Madrid and now vying for a seat in Valencia. The chance, of course, to defend his title. He was fastest in our fifth challenge, part of the second stage of this season, that we'll take a look back at here. A reminder then of our second set of challenges, challenges five to eight, those that determined the qualifiers for this second semi-final. Challenge five saw our competitors take the place of Jack Miller in his home GP on the Alma Pramac Ducati. The sixth challenge was to match the doctor, Valentino Rossi, around Mugello. Challenge seven, the only wet challenge, was to replace Johan Zarco in Sepang. And finally, a blast around the new Thai circuit in Buriram as Andrea Davizioso. A variety of circuits and challenges, far from easy just to make it this far. And now we move over to Motorland Aragon for our second semi-final. Plenty of action to look forward to. As I said, firstly in a 10 minute qualifying session and then in the semi-final itself, where we'll determine the last of our qualifiers to the grand final. So with that in mind then, Lisa, is everything ready down there? Yes, guys, having now refreshed our memories of what happened in the second part of the season, it's time now to welcome our players. Gamers, come on in, come and join me on stage. Here we go, a very warm welcome to all of you. A round of applause, just to let you know, as we mentioned in our first semi-final that this year the players 
have been able to access the Moto GP game on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Our semi finalists have made it through tonight on a variety of different platforms. But this evening, everyone will be playing with Lenovo by Legion Computers, but with a gaming controller that they can choose. So let's check out who will be fighting for a place in the grand final this evening. Let's check out their names and where they are from. Okay, from the fifth challenge, our PlayStation winner, Rick Moto GP35, our Xbox winner, Bomber45, and our PC winner, last year's world champion, no less, Travesteri7358. From the sixth challenge, the PlayStation winner, Davide Galina, 23. Xbox top competitor, Ayorka, 26. And the PC classified, Ivan Avella. From the seventh challenge, our PC winner, Matero, 1. Our Xbox winner, QP Nova, QP. And our top classified PlayStation contestant, Vindex, 813. And finally, from the eighth challenge our PC top classified from Indonesia Mo our Xbox winner Juan NH16 and our top classified PlayStation contestant Paul IG again I want to have a warm welcome to all our semi-finalists this evening and really welcome them to this championship and welcome them here tonight and wishing them the best of luck now, as they're going to get prepared, we're going to check out what they've been up to these past two days in Madrid. So let's take a look at this. What a lovely time they've had these past two days in the Spanish capital of Madrid. Now, often people play video games to disconnect, to relax. So what we did is ask our MotoGP riders if they ever play video games and with whom. And this is what they had to say. When I was a kid, I was playing a lot, and uh, even when I was in Moto2, but since I arrived in MotoGP, I realized that I don't have time, and then I play sometimes, but not, not much. My brother is still is in Moto2, has much more time, less events, and then uh, he's able to practice more. But uh, on winter time, I'm coming closer. When I was 15, 16, and 17, I played a lot. My daddy say, hey, if you just always uh, play, 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 maybe now you can also work for your vision. So I was sometimes playing ID, ID one eye, and like this I work with my right eye, and then I see if also with the left eye I can be faster than the right. Or, so it was good exercise for vision. I play, I play quite a lot, honestly. It's one way to relax after the working day and all the stressful. So I really like to play with all my friends. Yeah, I play. Uh, one of my passions is video games, always. That was my passion. Still is my passion, but I don't have any, any more time, or I don't have the same, the same time that I have before. I play much less, but still I have some, some skills, especially in a motor, motor racing game. During the GPs, normally I play in the afternoon a little bit, and sometimes it's good when you arrive in a new track to get, let's say, make familiarization with the, with the layout. 
even if we know a lot of the tracks, but it's always nice to to make a lab with the PlayStation and uh, and enjoy the enjoy the track. And I think for the rookies, it's really really important for them because uh, before they arrive there, they can make like simulation, and it's very interesting. At the track, I try to play because uh, it takes your mind away from you know the stress of the paddock and and the race weekend. I been playing with Maverick one time and a couple times Danny Kent and Marcel Schroeder and uh, Guattararo and that we all but to be honest I'm probably the worst out of all of them so it's not funny when you lose. <laughs> Well, it looks like some of the riders actually play the video games to learn the layouts of the circuits. So, who knows, maybe some of our gamers will become riders in the future. You never know, stranger things have happened. But back to the present, and it's the moment we've been waiting for. It's time to qualify. Tom, Alex, it's over to you. A perfect introduction to our competitors. The stage is set then for the riders to meet for the first time, jostling for starting positions on the grid, Tom. Yeah, absolutely right there, Alex. It is time then to get ready to see how the grid is going to line up. Let's go qualifying. Motorland Aragon Circuit is the venue for semi-final two in the MotoGP eSport Championship. As we said, this is how we will find out who lines up on where on the grid over the course for the race. Now, it's a 10-minute qualifying session. It's a very long lap here at Motorland Aragon as well. So it does mean that getting those laps in pretty early is pretty crucial, Alex. Yes, plenty of overtaking opportunities on this circuit. A fast-paced Herman Tilka track, most notable, as you said, for its length, over five kilometers. It'll take some time for the riders just to leave the pits, complete the warm-up lap, and then set their first timed lap. So that really does mean that one lost lap for an incident or similar could leave a rider under a great deal of pressure just to set a time in only 10 minutes of qualifying. Well, that 10-minute session is now underway. The riders making their way out of pit lane then for the first time here at Motorland Aragon. It's based in Alcanias in Spain, a very small village, actually. It's about halfway between Barcelona and Madrid in a circuit that is a favourite amongst the MotoGP riders, a track that, of course, was opened back in 2009 has been on the MotoGP calendar for every year since 2010 and it's full of various twists and turns, lots of technical ones, some fast, some flowing as well. As some of the riders come out onto the circuit for the first time then, and as we build up to this qualifying session, a quick word about the various nationalities represented at what is undoubtedly a global event. We already have six riders through from three different nationalities, including Germany, uh, moving through to the final. And our semi-final two competitors cover five different nationalities. Spain best represented. They have five gamers, Italy with four, Great Britain, France and Indonesia with one rider each. So uh, great to see such a variety of nationalities represented here. Yeah, MotoGP Esport Championship this year, of course, very much uh, an international flavour as it has been over the last couple of years. Now you can see as we look at Ivan Avella, he chose the Rebel KTM bike. We should state, by the way, that the bikes that these riders have chosen uh, was based yesterday on the free practice times. We had three free practice sessions. Three practice three was the session that counted most for these 12 riders. Basically, it went in ascending, sorry, descending order. So from first down to 12th position, of course, if you finish that session in first, uh, that means that you, uh, of course, got the first pick of the bike. The man who finished in first position at the end of yesterday was last year's champion, Trastevere 73. And he is going to be on that factory Ducati, trying to get himself into pole position. Trastevere, very much the uh, man to beat, one of the uh, pre-race favorites this weekend. There has been uh, plenty of action already, uh, as we said this week. Uh, the practices that you mentioned there yesterday, uh, but also further practices here today. And Trastevere has come out on top invariably. Uh, so he will be looking to carry that form through, through qualifying and indeed into the race itself. Yeah, it's been interesting to notice qualifying tactics because we've had quite a few time sessions actually today with Trastevere, the Italian. Uh, we ride on board with him and now we look at him from an external angle. And uh, we saw actually that he was setting lap times in the qualifying sessions quite late on in that session. A really interesting tactic that he had going on. Interesting to note as well, Bomber 45 uh, has an incident on the outlap, so uh, he's showing us being pit and uh, now clearly returning to the circuit. So that will leave him a little bit out of kilter with the rest of the riders out on track who are all coming through and towards completion of their first full-timed lap. While we've got it up on the uh, screen, the tower graphic on the left-hand side, 
gives you information about the lap times that are being set. And orange is a uh, personal best. And clearly at this stage on a first full flying lap, that's what you'd expect all of the riders to be setting. And a red would be a uh, new outright fastest. And we'll see those once the uh, first flying laps are completed by these riders. Yeah, absolutely right. If it's in grey, it does mean that it's a non-improvement over that sector, either on their personal best or indeed on a fastest uh, lap, whether they are on it at all. And it is... Uh, by sector as well so even if they set a yellow first or an orange first sector they can set a red second sector and be fastest overall in that particular part of the lap just looking at Matero 1 here as well that's a name that will be familiar to you if you watch MotoGP Esports Grand Final in 2017 he was a part of that if you remember and a very big part of it he was as well he sadly had a crash though on his first flying lap here not the way he wanted to do things curse of the commentator just as he was being <laughs> uh, introduced and discussed as uh, one of the favourites from last season as the first time laps come in yeah, Ivan Novella, the fastest man then initially in this session, Rick Moto GP35, and you can see a crash there at the first corner, Juan NH16 setting it to the scenery at the first turn, and Ivan Novella also having a bit of an off-track excursion going through turn one and then carrying it on through turn two there, manages to keep it upright relatively easily, but this lap of course has been invalidated, there's only six minutes left on the clock, the time is counting down pretty quickly here, so it is crucial, as we said, to get those lap times in, at least to have a banker lap time in early on in the session, because if you do manage to mess up the latter half of the session at least you've got some kind of representation on the board and a warning coming from race direction for Ivana Vela which I can only assume is for exceeding track limits so that's something he'll have to watch out for as this session goes on but so far so good for him he currently sits top of the timesheets and by over two tenths of a second clear of Rick Moto GP in second place we did mention Trastevere saving his uh, best until the latter stages of the session at the moment he's down in P4 and four tenths of a second back should mention on that tower graphic on the left hand side of your screen as well if you can see a uh, white triangle with the red background that denotes that the lap time has been cancelled generally due to exceeding track limits or race direction might have decided that that is uh, a reason there is a reason why that lap time has been disallowed you see Paul IG has had a crash likewise Rick Moto GP35 we just catch the back end of that one there he's on the Alba Pramac Ducati the only Briton on the grid here tonight and during the uh, rehearsals that we had earlier on today he was looking pretty handy actually and it was actually very interesting to note where different riders were stronger and it can come down a lot due to just keeping your nose out of trouble in those first few laps of the race focusing at the moment on Trastevere because he has just set a new personal best and fastest third sector heading towards the conclusion of what looks set to be a potential first position lap and it is indeed a new fastest for the session 139.5 and he'll be satisfied with that because we have seen uh, during the course of this week uh, him hovering around about that marker and that being enough for him to uh, be the leader in among these riders. Yeah you can see the world champion there just watching on he'd love to be able to become a two-time world champion champion but of course he needs to get himself in those top six positions under race conditions at the moment he's at the top of the qualifying session Ivan Novella is just over a tenth of a second behind Rick Moto GP 35 there in third place as well so front row currently for him fastest in the first sector though is Riorca 26 on board the number 37 machine we now ride on board with the LCR Honda rider just going down through the reverse corkscrew this is looking like some lap from the Spaniard well back at the moment in terms of single lap pace uh, a second down on the leader but an opportunity to to improve on that here clearly with a good first sector and uh, Trastevere has been so strong in the back half of the lap particularly the last sector which to be honest is only two turns and yet somehow he manages to hook it up perfectly and consistently put in decent times throughout part of the lap and we do now see that uh, Riorca uh, does indeed drop a little bit back in the second sector still on a personal best though and he'll be one to watch towards the end of this lap a couple of riders on personal best at the moment yeah those personal best lap times coming in you can see the split time as well over that particular sector you can see Riorca has actually dropped a lot of time in in that second and third sector where Trastevere was so strong. Six tenths of a second down now he is on the fastest lap time, which would put him in the middle of that second row of the grid as it stands. We look at Matero 1 here on board the number 27. He's on board the Angel Nieto Ducati. Matero needs a good lap time because he is just sitting on the fringes of the top 10 in 11th position. Over the timeline comes Matero. He goes to the second row of the grid, but lap time's coming in. Riorca goes to the middle of the second row now as well, bumping Matero down to the third row of the grid here. Three riders hadn't set a lap time until they came thundering over the line there. Bomber 45 is still on what will be his uh, first completed lap because of course his uh, incident on the warm-up lap but uh, we will very shortly have 12 riders having completed their first laps and at the moment just a second separating the 11 riders who have nice and close as we might have expected yeah down the back straight we go with the LCR Honda rider this is Bomber 45 and you can see Bomber at the moment is needing to set a good lap time as you said there Alex as well he's down in last position at the moment what is his lap time
time going to be. It's a personal best in that uh, third sector. Is it going to be anything to write home about as he comes over the timing line? He'll get one more bite at the cherry, maybe two if he's on it, down towards that first corner. Bobble 45, not a lap time that's anything particular, uh, particularly special. He's 1.3 seconds adrift of the fastest pace. But one thing crucial to mention here, Alex, is the gap between the top 12 riders. Just over one second and under a second between the top 11. Yeah, as I said, um, Bomber 45 uh, is now up and running. And, and that, uh, although uh, not really a representative time of what he's surely capable of doing, uh, he's up and running. He's set a lap now and can really get on and about his business. Meanwhile, the top two are trying to extend their margin even further. Uh, Trastevere just running wide there and exceeding track limits. And that lap is going to be invalidated. But Ivana Vela still going well. Uh, second position on the timesheets at the moment, but only a tenth down and at the moment uh, with three sectors completed up with an opportunity to go fastest. The KCM RC16 comes barreling down that back straight. He's got no slipstream in front. He's got the world champion and the pole sitter currently in front as well. Just two more corners from home and Ivan Avella here could be set to upset the Italian's party. We look at the Italian on the left-hand side of your screen now around the final corner and over the timing line for Ivan Avella. He's had the lap time cancelled though, actually. He's exceeded track limits somewhere along the line and unfortunately what looked to be a very promising lap time has all gone to pot. Yes, the inset image in the bottom left-hand corner showed his frustration uh, before he even got to the finish line, so he knew that that wasn't going to work. In the meanwhile, Paul IG had uh, moved himself up onto the front row and up into second position as Trastevere has an incident, uh, so he will be under pressure now. 40-odd seconds still remaining on the clock. The riders can complete any laps that they're on when the chequered flag falls, uh, but apart from Bomber 45, not many of them are going to get a full extra lap. He's coming through now and moves up into 11th position, eight-tenths of a second back uh, from our current leader, but that does mean now that all 12 are covered by less than a second. Yeah, Bobble 45 really going to have to pull his finger out here on this final flying lap. Here's Rick Moda, GP35, representing Great Britain. He's at the head of the second row of the grid in fourth position on board that Alma Pramet Ducati. Currently, can he put anything together? He was fastest in the first sector, dropped a bit of time in that second sector, but let's see how this third sector... Oh, and he's down, as I say that. So, he was on a personal best lap time, and it is going to be a best then of fourth position on the grid for the Briton here. Nobody else around him looking like they're improving significantly. Deborah Galina there in sixth place on the outside of that second row on a personal best in the second sector, but nobody really upsetting the party at the moment. No, Vindex with a uh, new fastest first sector, but two slower sectors since then, so uh, seemingly dropping out of contention to move up from the third row. Of course, we'll have four rows of three riders for the race itself. Uh, QP, Nova, uh, Mo and Bomber, the bottom three at the moment who would provisionally be on the back row of the grid, do all still have opportunities to improve and they all are on personal best laps at the moment. So that's where the focus will be late on here as Mo attempts to climb up from bottom on the grid, still within a second of the leader, comes over the line and does improve inside the top 10. Yeah, ninth position there for Mo at the chequered flag on board the Aprilia Racing Team, Grassini RSGP. So good final lap there from Mo representing Indonesia. There's a lot of support for the Southeast Asian rider. He could be set to potentially make history by becoming the first rider from that continent to make themselves into that final. Here we look at Bomber 45 then. He's on his final flying lap. Is it going to be anything to shout about? It was personal best in the third sector over the line here for the Repsol Honda rider. Can he improve? He does inside the top 10 right at the very end of that session. So 10th place for Bomber. That is something for him to smile about at what was a very difficult qualifying session. Very challenging indeed. We didn't see any runaway leaders this time around as we take a look at the results of that qualifying then. Trastevere uh, taking the pole position. Uh, well, we might have anticipated that in terms of single lap paces, right? Rivals won't be too pleased about that. They would have liked to stop him bursting away in the early stages of the race, but they've got it all to do now. That said, nice and close in terms of the timings, uh, all within a second of one another. We're in for a very exciting race. Yeah, absolutely right there, as you said, Alex. It's going to be very exciting. Here it is, Trastevere then, the Italian, looking pretty calm and cool and collected as it goes after that qualifying session. A very, very exciting qualifying session that was. And as you said, that gap in particular is the big talking point, and surely it's going to make the race absolutely terrible. And he has every reason to be satisfied. He has been peerless so far here this week. And uh, another example of uh, outright and, and dominant pace there, but not by a massive margin. Uh, that might be a bit of a concern for him. The others have clearly stepped it up, knowing it's game time now. Yeah, absolutely right then. So let's see how the riders fared over the course of that session. Some highlights from qualifying here for semi-final two. You can see that everybody was getting themselves ready and wound up to set their first flying laps in the session pretty early on. You see the concentrated faces of our competitors down there as well.
And here we can see this is Paul IG in particular in the early stages of the session. He was trying to set his personal best lap time. Should mention these riders, these competitors have had the opportunity to select their own controllers for this particular event. So personal preference comes down to it. The great thing about uh, seeing them in action, of course, is no helmets here. We get to see the concentration on their faces, the look in their eyes, uh, steely determination. And uh, it certainly gives you a, an extra aspect to seeing the racing. Yeah, it certainly does. You can see the competitive lap times coming in. Trast Everlay there with that fastest lap. He wasn't to be beaten in that session. Some other riders got mighty, mighty close. Patero one in some points in particular was looking pretty menacing on board that Angel Nieto Ducati. Wasn't quite enough. And you can see the frustration there for some of the riders creeping in. That is Trastevere there, the fastest rider in that session. He had a lap time disallowed in the latter stages. Bomber 45 as well. He managed to get himself right out of the bottom dregs of the session right at the very end as well. Yeah, hard work for uh, Bomber uh, right from the start. The opening lap with a, uh, a spin on the uh, warm-up lap, but managed to bounce back and get something out of the session, get some running. There were plenty of crashes there as they just pushed to the absolute limit and in a few cases beyond it as well. Yeah, absolutely right. This was Rick Moto GP35. He had two crashes at exactly the same point over the course of that session. There it is, Trelast Everlay then. Pole position for him, exactly what he needed and wanted to do. He'll have the clearest view down towards that first corner. It is going to be absolutely crucial to see how they go over the course of that 10 lap race. However, it's not just time for that for the moment because we've got to hand a Tiso watch to our pole sitter. Lisa, back down to you. Exactly that, Tom. The prize for our Pullman will be a Tiso watch, just like the riders in the MXGP World Championship. Right, now the Pullman is going to be Trastevere. Come on down. Congratulations. Come and collect your prize. Special edition MotoGP watch for this evening. Perfect start to your semi-final. Thank you very much. There you go. Have your photo taken. There we go. Limited edition watch there. Good luck for your semi-final and for the race. Thank you. Trust very there. Okay. Now, of course, we've just seen the Tiso watch for our Pullman, but we also have other prizes on offer this evening. Now, the winner tonight will receive a BMW driving experience around Nürburgring, but the main prize for the world champion will be this car. Look at that. The BMW M240i Coupe is designed for uncompromising performance. The specially tuned M Sport suspension optimized high performance components and impressive output of the M Performance Twin Power Turbo inline six cylinder petrol engine with 340 horsepower, pure driving pleasure to produce high level adrenaline and plenty of thrills. Just a look at that, a very smart car, I have to say. And uh, I am pretty jealous to whoever gets that prize. So that will be going to our world champion, the main prize. Okay, so we've all got that to look forward to. But the first step is this evening. Now, before the race, we want to get some advice, okay? We're gonna get some advice on the Aragon circuit from a rider that really knows the layout. So check out what Maverick Vinales has to say about Motorland Aragon. Well, we start the lap. First corner, very important to break early. It's a corner that you should exit well. Second corner, very important to keep higher corner speed because corner three is in uphill and important for sector one. Next corner is very particular uh, braking area, so you, you, you have to brake hard and with banking, so you have to be careful. Turn six, important to keep really good control on the gas. If not, you spin the tire. Now, we arrive to the downhill. Very easy to go out in first corner, so you have to be very precise on the race. Turn 10, again, really good corner speed. If not, you smoke the tire. Turn 12, and I, I crash. <laughs> so, <laughs> turn 12, uh, 
it's difficult because you didn't see the braking area, so you have to brake by only by feelings. We are right. Corner 14, 15, important to exit well because we have a long straight. And we arrive to the last corner. Again, it's very similar. You have to break early to keep very high corner speed. And then just control the gas because the spinning is very high and we finish the lap. Really good luck. I wish you can win the race, enjoy it, be focused. I'm flying to Malaysia, so actually it's a pity that I'm not there, but I will follow. Gas. Some of the secrets there to this track, but we're about to find out which of our competitors is best able to unlock them. The moment of truth has arrived. Yeah, absolutely right. It's time then to go racing for semi-final two. Land Aragon in Spain is the home of semi-final two. The circuit based in Alcaniz is going to be very, very exciting over the course of this 10-lap race. The top six competitors, let's not forget, at the chequered flag will be going through to that grand final in Valencia. It is going to be very, very unpredictable, this one, Alex. Focus on those top six positions then, and therefore the riders just need to make sure that they remain consistent, error-free. Qualifying was one thing. You could make uh, t errors, take risks going for single lap pace, but here no errors will be permitted. Here are the starting grid then. Trastevere, Paul IG, Ivan Avella on the front row. Rick Moto GP35, you can see there on row two as well. Vindex, Matero, Mo on row three. Bomber, Nova and Juan on row four. And you can see Four rows of three riders down to that first 90-degree left-hander. It is going to be very unpredictable to see who will get the jump down. So wait for those red lights to come on at the top of your screen. Who will get the drag down to that first corner? Who will be leading over the line in 10 laps time as we get ready to find out who the six finalists will be at the end of this evening. It's ready then to go racing here in Alcaniz in Spain. Semi-final two for the MotoGP Esport Championship is underway and it's a good start from Trastevere of a pole position. Who else gets away very well? Look at Rick MotoGP 35 on the Alba Prepa Ducati. Paul IG slots himself into second place. Everybody being very, very cautious into the first corner but not Nova QP. And a big crash for Rick MotoGP 35 and somebody else has gone down. Matero 1 has crashed out in the cup first First couple of corners here, big, big drama. So it's Trastevere from Paul IG from now Bomber 45. And even Avella, one of our fastest riders so far this week, has also got himself into problems. So there goes absolutely everything I said about keeping calm and cautious on the opening lap in particular, keeping yourself up and in the race because we had uh, four dramatic crashes in the early stages and the top eight starting to break away now. Well, this is exactly what Trastevere needed to do. He's now three tenths of a second in front of Paul IG. Paul on board the Monster Yamate Hard Tech 3 machine will be trying to do in the Madrid crowd proud, his home crowd proud here tonight. But he He's going to have a very hard task because Trust Everday, when he has clear track in front of him in particular, is so, so good at just stretching out an advantage. And this is exactly what his rivals didn't want to see. The Italian, the reigning world champion, breaking away out in front. The riders who fell early on battling amongst themselves out at the back, but there's a three-second gap behind eighth position already. So the last of those uh, qualification positions, transfer spots to the final, if you like, are closely contested, but at the moment, only by eight riders. Yeah, absolutely right. So Juan and H16, the last of the riders who is going to be going through to semi-final two as it stands at the moment. But you can see lots of battles taking place further back. You can see Paul IG all over the back end of Trastevere as Trastevere runs it a little bit wide there through turn 16. That might compromise his run going on to this start finish straight. Let's see whether the slipstream comes into effect. Over the line we go to complete the first lap down towards that first corner. Paul is not close enough at this, at this moment. Looks for a bit of a cutback though coming off turn number one, trying to line himself up. He's certainly looking menacing on the tail of our race leader who's not going to want to risk too much defending that race lead there's two battles going on here the race for top spot of course and the prize that Lisa's already explained that is carried with it and a place in the top six and a place in that grand final but it couldn't be much closer at the moment between the top two in the first of our battles. Tell you what David Galina's got some problems from behind there as well as Bomber because those guys are separated by the smallest of margins at the moment Bomber there in third position ahead of Galina 
and Juan and H16, as well as Vindex, actually. They're all separated by a very small margin. And Mo as well, the Indonesian, he's in seventh place at the moment, just outside of that crucial top six. By the way, if your name's in white, it means you're all right. It means you're through to the grand final in Valencia at the moment. But that could all be set to change over the next seven and a half laps. Fifth to eighth at the moment, covered by one and a half seconds. So the last of our qualification positions, as tense as you like early on. Will this race settle down or will it be like a game of chess where they strategically hold station and wait for errors for riders around them? Because those errors so far have indeed been forthcoming. So through into the left-hander, out of turn 15, we go on towards the 968-metre-long back straight. Look at Bomber now. He's trying to gap David Galina. This is exactly what Bomber needs to do to hold on to that final podium position. And even Avella's had a second crash in this race, so perhaps pushing a little bit too hard, trying to make up for lost time after that opening lap crash. And sadly, on lap two, he's gone down the road again. Yeah, Avella down from 11th position, goes to the back of the field, and surely that's going to be too far back to come from there. It would take a real turn of events for him to get back up and running in amongst those qualities qualification positions. Another new fastest lap from our race leader. Over two tenths of a second is the gap on paper at least, but uh, Paul IG doesn't look to be dropping back to too great an extent. No, no moves being made here for Paul IG as you say there. Nothing in particular between them in terms of lap times at the moment as it sits between Schlasseberry and Paul IG. Look at this as well further back. Here is Mo. He's in seventh place just outside of that crucial top six, but look how close the gap is in front of him as well between Juan and H16. Vindex also immediately in front of him as well as David Galina. Here is Mo, the Indonesian. We know we've got a lot of fans over in Asia and especially in the Southeast Asian region, and they will be certainly hoping that he is able to put on a strong performance for them here tonight. Brilliant opportunity to see the battle for the last of those transfer spots as Mo tries to line up a move on Vindex for sixth position. There's not much to choose between sixth, seventh, and Riorca in eighth position, not too far adrift either. The other four riders who've all been involved in incidents on the opening two laps, uh, some way adrift and need to set really fast lap time now to get back to, back into contention and need to hope for errors from these guys as they go nose to tail with Mo looking for a way through into P6. Through the right hand we go then. This is as they come down the hill in towards turn 14 and then into turn 15. It's a very difficult braking zone, that, because it goes downhill and it's easy to just wash out the front end, as we've seen over the course. We saw that from Rick Moto GP35 during the qualifying session. Nobody going down there at the moment. Everybody keeping it on the straight and narrow, and those gaps becoming even more pronounced as the sectors tick on. And Vindex just far enough away at the moment that Mo can't try to do anything too clever, uh, tucking in directly behind him and gaining an advantage down the inside line. No such fortune for him for now. It's one and a half seconds covering the top three. They're still starting to gradually break away. Trastevere with the largest advantage he's had all race now. Four tenths of a second up on Paul IG in second place. Yeah, fastest overall. Three consecutive lap times that have been quickest for Trastevere over the last timing line. And he is looking like he's trying to check out here. He's got a four tenth of a second advantage over Paul IG, which is just enough of a buffer for Paul IG to not close up. But we can see how much quicker the Movistar Yamaha, the Mo Monster Yamaha Tech 3 rider, rider, I should say, in the first sector in particular is closing up on to the back of Trust Everday. And meanwhile, Vindex isn't dropping Mo either, so that fight for sixth position. The last of the automatic transfer spots is going absolutely nowhere, and Rayorka has managed to close in on them as well, so we're starting to develop a three-rider pack now in the battle for sixth place. This is going to be very exciting and very, very crucial indeed. Mo there in seventh place, Rayorka in eighth position, Vindex just in front of those two at the moment. Let's keep an eye as we cross back to look at David Galina here. He's riding the team X-Star Suzuki machine. Something of a quiet race for him, but he won't mind that in any way, shape, or form because he's exactly what he needs to get himself into that grand final. Further back, completely different story. Juan NH16, Vindex close behind, Mo also in touching distance as well as Riorca. We look at Mo now, the Indonesian, down through into the left of turn 15, on towards that back straight we go for the fourth time of asking, is the slipstream going to come into effect for any of these riders? They're just not close enough to be able to use it effectively. Doesn't look as though he's close enough for the moment at least and uh, the rider directly ahead of him not even needing to uh, move to break that uh, slipstream advantage. So for the moment, the riders holding station, but Vindex, Mo, and Ryoka, who actually has been dropped off by a couple of tents on this lap, still very much in contention. And don't forget about those riders trying to come back from a massive uh, self-imposed handicap early on, because uh, QP Nova is now less than two seconds back from this group, uh, as you can see, just in the distance there, uh, fighting off Rick Moto GP on the fringes of the top ten. Yeah, Rick Moto GP, of course, on the recovery ride, he's going to need a minor miracle to try and catch up. 
to the back of this group and get themselves in contention. But we know that Rick has had the pace. He qualified on the head of that second row of the grid and was potentially going even quicker before he crashed on his final flying lap. So if he's able to put something together, gets maybe some clean air or use another rider to help him ascend through the field, that could be very beneficial for him indeed. Three and a half seconds at the moment is the gap separating him from a grand final position. And it's Vindex who's going to feel the oh, most, most nervous crashed. of all. Mo's crash, sorry to interrupt you there, Alex. So he, from seventh position, has sadly had an incident on track and has sent it down the road, and that potentially could be his charge for the grand final over here tonight. Half race distance, and Mo drops down to 11th position. Ivana Vela, who was really in the wars on the opening couple of laps, the only rider behind him now, and Mo rejoins at the back of the group behind Matero in P11. Rick Moto GP then, who we were talking about. Is that a second incident for Mo, or is that uh, still the graphic from the first one? Uh, looks like Mo's now gone to the back of the field. So uh, Mo with uh, real difficulties here, and I think that spells the end of any qualification hopes for him. That's a big, big shame there for him. You can see the riders breaking over to the right-hand side of the circuit as we look at it, trying to get out of that slipstream. You can see the top two still relatively within touching distance of one another. Trastevere on the left-hand bottom of your screen, Paul IG on the top. Both two very, very nice guys, and they are trying to get themselves that BMW driving experience at the Nürburgring. They'll be joining Christian MM17, our winner from semi-final one. Seven tenths of a second between them. The uh, incident for Mo has really broken a little bit the uh, fight for sixth position, but only briefly because, remember, Rayorka was going strongly and closing in. QP Nova has gradually reduced that deficit that was massive at the end of lap number two, but is now less than two seconds. And uh, just, as I said, three and a half seconds covering sixth down to what is now ninth position that was tenth, of course, before the crash for Mo. So through the right hand, and we go this opening sector, it begins to tighten up on you. It's a very tricky pass off the lap to deal with, especially as you flick it into this right hand. And we're looking at Bomber 45, a quiet race it has been for the Repsol Honda rider, but that's exactly what he'll have wanted. A podium position will be something to smile about come the end of race day. We're now at six laps out of ten, so we're over half distance in this race. You can see David Galina there. Now he's going to have to try and keep his eye on the rider behind him. That, of course, is Juan NH16, Juan on the Movistar Yamaha, beginning to close incrementally mentally over the latter half of this race. But do you get yourself into a oh, fight? Oh, and he's oh. off! And 1H16 sadly has a high side and crashes out. We could hear the uh, big, big drama from behind us as well. And we could hear the uh, emotions from Juan, from Juan and H16. And that does send him out then of the grand final as it stands at the moment. I was literally just saying that do they risk pushing to try and hold position or do they simply allow themselves to drop back knowing they've got a significant advantage over riders outside of the top six and Pan NH has made the racer's decision. He carried on going for it and he's dropped it out of off the circuit. Well, Christmas come early then for Riorca 26 at the moment. He's now inside the top six and he makes his way into that grand final. As it stands, you can see the LCR Honda rider. There's a big gap behind him as well in the form of Nova GP and also Rick Moto GP35. So Juan NH16 might have thrown this all away. You can see Trastevere 73 at the moment, your race leader, your reigning world champion. He has got now a seven tenth of a second advantage over Paul IG. That is enough of a buffer, as we've seen, for him to not be challenged immediately from behind. Just going back to the fight for uh, sixth position. Remember that QP Nova has gradually decreased that gap uh, progressively over the laps and now he'll be looking at trying to make an impression because it's only just over a second and there is time before the chequered flag for him to have a real assault on P6. That's something to look forward to later on. Certainly is. Through the left hand we go. Here is Bomber 45. Then you can see Paul IG there in second place just up the road. You can see David Galina there as well. He's got a podium in sight but he's going to have to really put some hard work in. He's under a second away from Bomber now so maybe if he's able to close up over the next lap or two he might be able to think about something I either on the penultimate lap or the last lap, but we know how consistent Bomber has been, and that has really been the name of the game here in the MotoGP Esport Championship. Consistency over the course of a race will get you through. Seeing Vindex in fifth position, uh, one second back from Davide Galina, who uh, Tom's just been talking about, to six tenths of a second clear of Rayorka. Rayorka's not going to try and get himself in the mix for a battle for fifth position, I wouldn't suspect, uh, in too much of a hurry, but he does need to keep the pace up because QP Nova, as we've said repeatedly, is now just over a second behind, and Juan NH is coming back into it after his earlier crash. Rick Moto GP going with him, two seconds covering seventh to ninth positions, and they're only now a second back from sixth place. We could have a four-rider scrap by the end. Well, this is getting very tantalizing in the closing stages then of semi-final two. Let's keep an eye and see how that gap does 
increase or decrease over the course of the next final two laps. Here is QP Nova then, not necessarily been the fastest rider over the course of this eSports semi-final. However, he has been consistent and he has crucially stayed it on two wheels. And Mo, to compound his woes, has had a third crash in this race. Closing up for eighth position here. One NH16 only narrowly ahead of Rick Moto GP. These two won't want to hold one another up. They need to be closing down QP Nova, but most specifically, the three of them need to be going towards Rioja, who sits in that last qualification place. Well, we see this in Moto3, don't we? Riders working together, using the slipstream to try and close that gap down to riders in front. It's not quite as effective here in Moto GP. However, you can still do it, and these guys need to be working together. They need to be thinking about tactics to close up and give themselves the best opportunity possible. However, of course, then comes the point where you've worked together, then you close up on the back of that top six position and the gloves come off. Yeah, Rick Moto GP might be thinking he needs to get past uh, Juan NH here because he is dropping back from QP Nova and uh, QP Nova might be the last rider left to try and challenge Rioja for that sixth position. The gap is well below a second now between sixth and seventh places as we see uh, on screen. A crash for Matero who was already well adrift of the battle. Second crash there for Matero, one over the course of this race. It's gone from bad to worse for the Spaniard. Disappointment there for him. You can see Rick MotoGP 35 going side by side with Juan NH16 nearly down the back straight. He's not close enough, but Juan NH16 is a little bit wide at turn 16. He's going to close up his Rick MotoGP 35. They're onto the penultimate lap and he's all out of shape there. Is Juan NH16 onto the start finish straight. He's able to carry good momentum there, crucially, down to the first corner and he does somehow hold on to that position. But coming through just at the front of that shot was the battle for the last qualification position between Rioja and QP Nova that's only a half second now between the two of them and this is going right down to the wire less what? than two laps remaining one and eight sixteen there is going to be very careful because race direction are going to be coming down on him like a ton of bricks he's exceeding track limits multiple times over the last few corners and they are going to be very very hard on that they might hand him a time penalty here which could potentially be something to smile about for Rick Moto GP 35 here let's keep an eye on it see how it changes over the next lap and a half or so but down to the reverse corkscrew they go for the penultimate time. No positions changing there for seventh place as it stands. Well, QP Nova, we're back with now, sitting in seventh position. Needs to find a little extra spurt. Fantastic on laps seven and eight to bring the gap below a second for the first time in the vast majority of this race. And he's well and truly within touching distance now. Rioja will try and respond and fight back. Here he is in sixth position, holding the last of those transfer spots. One second back from Vindex in P5. The top five look largely settled and nobody up there. Looks like they're going to get in too much mischief trying to change positions. But positions certainly could change for sixth, seventh, eighth and indeed ninth. Yeah, absolutely right. Down the back straight we go. We're looking at your race leader, Trastevere, 73 at the moment. Nice, smooth line there in front of him. 1.4 second advantage as he comes on to the final lap. It has been a very, very impressive race for Trastevere and exactly what we're used to seeing from the reigning world champion. That is exactly why he has that accolade because he's just been so calm and so composed. He's not let any pressure get to him and he's managed to hold out that advantage and hold off the charge of this man here, Paul IG. Wow, a new fastest lap from Juan NH6. 16, really pushing, knows that it's now or never. Uh, the gap is a second between himself and that last transfer spot. So we're going to get very close late on here between Rioja, uh, QP Nova, who's less than half a second back now, and Juan NH16, who's less than half a second back behind him. A second covering sixth to eighth for the last of those qualification places. Looking here at your race leader once again. Juan NH16 was fastest last time around. That gap coming down to under half a second. The gap for seven, sixth place as well, coming down to a tenth of a second. I'd love to cross back to that. Juan NH16 has crashed out then on the final lap. And here is the battle for the final position in the semi the grand final in Valencia. Who is going to take it? It's Rioja in sixth place. It's QP Nova on the Realia Vincia Ducati. Who is the rider challenging? Matero 1 has had a third crash in this race. It goes from bad to worse for the Spaniard. But here comes QP Nova down towards turn 12. He's not close enough on the breakthrough there. He's going to have to try and hope that Rioja makes an uncharacteristic error. He makes a mistake on this final lap or tries to force him into an error. It's going to take something special, but if he can get the gap down to less than two tenths of a second, there's still a straight to come, and that's what he's going to be trying to build up to now. High pressure situation for these two, both trying to capitalise in one way or another on the slipstream. Rioja's trying to break it. QP Nova trying to gain from it. He's smoother down the straight. Is he close enough to make a move? Not for the moment. It's going to be a last bend lunge. Absolutely right there. Trust Everlay comes over the line, though. He wins MotoGP Esports semi-final two. An electric performance from the Italian. And was that a crash for Paul? 
Paul IG, sorry Tom, Paul IG who sat in second position, a graphic just showing there for an incident. Yeah, let's have a look and see, he has crossed the line, he has been classified potentially in second position, but let's keep an eye and see whether that might be a graphical error. Bomber there in third place, he takes the final spot on the podium ahead of David Galina, Vindex and Riorca did manage to hold off the charge from behind, he holds on to that final position by the skin of his teeth in that grand final. Not to take away anything at all from Trastevere, but our focus for the majority there was on that battle for sixth position and how it gradually closed up. You could see it coming. QP Nova was gaining chunks of time with every passing lap. It was getting tighter and tighter. He was bringing two riders from directly behind him with him, and it couldn't have been much closer on that final lap. Well, Paul IG has been classified there in second position, so it must have been an incident that happened over the timing line. But we can see that there's lots of drama. You can see the final results on the screen there behind us, but some big talking points there in that race, Alex Trasevrele doing exactly what he needed to do, taking that win, taking the best lap in the race, untouchable. Not sure what that was all about for Paul IG. I uh, apologise for cutting over you there in the excitement of uh, what could have been a, a race-changing uh, drama in the latter stages, but uh, no such problems in the end, and the top six as they were going into the final lap, finishing that way. But as I said at the time, not much to choose between sixth and seventh places, and Rick MotoGP keeping with them as well. Obviously, the riders who've narrowly missed out there will be bitterly disappointed at the end of what was some real excitement. And sadly missing out Ivan Avella there as well on board the Red Bull KTM machine. We really thought he was going to be a favourite and given the pace he had he looked like a favourite as well but it comes down to that crucial thing, right place, right time and he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Wow, there couldn't have been much more uh, emotion as we're seeing. Uh, there we have it in terms of results. Plenty of talking points, though, at the end of that race. And uh, as I say, uh, uh, clearly a variety of emotions among our competitors. Yeah, we can see Juan at 16 there. He's almost in tears at the end of that one there. The emotion on the Spaniard's face. It has been a very difficult time for him. We saw he had the pace. He set the fastest lap in that race, as I correct myself from saying that Tras Evade set the fastest one earlier on. But we can see Juan at 16 there. So, so cruel for him there because we know he had the pace and he knows he had the pace there as well. And you can just see the disappointment for him. It is a big, big shame for him to end up in that position there, Alex. Yeah, it couldn't have been a much more dramatic finale, but great to see the sportsmanship and camaraderie between the riders as well. Uh, congratulating and commiserating in equal measure, and the atmosphere has been really good here tonight. Uh, mixed emotions, of course, for our riders. A tough race uh, for all of our competitors, and it looks as though we're about to see images of how we got on. It was a long hold at the start line, almost as if to ramp up the drama. Uh, Trastevere didn't see any of the drama behind him because he made the break, and I'm sure that was the plan. Pol position away and gone uh, lights to flag for victory for our uh, early race leader and pre-race favorite our reigning world champion Paul IG uh, barring that uh, nervous moment when I saw the graphic for a, uh, a crash in the latter stages uh, taking a, a good second position and then, uh, well, the fight was further back down the order, to be perfectly honest. Paul IG keeping up with Trastevere uh, in the early laps, but gradually dropping away. And I think once he saw the race leader pulling clear, he wasn't about to take too many risks trying to reel him back in. He has been the fourth man of this week, of this event, and uh, taking second position. Good enough, of course, well and truly, to move through to the grand final. A couple of other riders who had quiet, isolated races inside the top five. Bomber 45 after the disappointment of qualifying to a great job and uh, also we saw uh, plenty of uh, as we just see the images of concentration that's what I was talking about earlier on here today uh, Davide Galina also remaining inside the uh, top six and largely untroubled for the vast majority of that race Vindex moving into the uh, top five and consolidating that ranking as we saw falls for a couple of the riders down the order most notably Ivan Avella and uh, Mo Mo suffering a torrid time and he'll be devastated of course uh, with that and commiserations to him as he fails to to make it through. We see that the uh, competitors, they've had a tough couple of days. They've had uh, plenty of practices. They've had plenty of uh, trial runs and practice runs here today, but it's all come down to that one race. And uh, well, the drama that we saw on the opening couple of laps qualifying ended up mattering very little aside from those top two who blasted clear. A super performance from uh, Trastevere who, as you can see, celebrates. He's got used to uh, celebrating. He's got well practiced for celebrating. Yet another victory for him. Exactly, Alex. Uh, an emotional and eventful semi-final there. And of course, that was the moment that determined the next six seats in our grand final. Now, I have the official results with me now. If the guys would like to come to the stage with me and Tom, we have Travis Derry, 
Paul 16, Bomber, David Egalini, Vindex, and our Yorker. Guys, come and join Tom and I on the stage. Now give a round of applause as well. An incredible, incredible result there for Absolutely. those competitors. Of course, all the guys have a Michelin cap, which they are wearing. And, and for our winner, an amazing driving experience at the Nürburgring surface. And of course, if you'd like to present the prize to Travis Derry again, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> yeah, trust him out there. He's already got a BMW at home, of course. He won the championship last year, and now he gets the chance to drive some more BMWs there as well. Let's nip straight in. Trust the there, an incredible race. Just first of all, tell us, how did you do that? How did you manage to keep the pressure off from Paul behind and, yeah. and create that gap? Yeah, B Paul uh, was uh, very fast, very, very, very fast, uh, like me. And uh, <laughs> the race was uh, clean, very, very uh, fast, all the race. And uh, I, I searched to, to, be, um, to, be, to, to keep calm. And, so. and uh, good, I, I, I am very, very happy. And of course, it was another, a great, great race. It was a fantastic and, race, you're right. And of course, yes, another yes. BMW driving experience for uh, you. Yeah, you're getting and, uh, used to these prizes, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I will be there with, uh, with Manzovic. Yeah. And it uh, will, be, will be great. Uh, I hope to, to enjoy it, uh, obviously, uh, this. And, uh, <laughs> I, I want to say thanks to all my, my family, all the, the people who look at uh, me now. Uh, look, look at me now, <laughs> and uh, great. Uh, my friends, uh, uh, the makers, uh, and uh, MotoGP, that uh, was uh, great uh, ever. Well, a round of applause once again to our six grand finalists here tonight. <laughs> very, very impressive performances from everybody involved here. Let's have a look then, shall we? and see what the graphics are like then to see who has made the cut into the grand final from here tonight. You can see there on your screen, Trastevere, Paul IG, Bomber 45, David Galina, Vindex 813, Riorca 26. They join Christian MM17, Andrew ZH, Luigi 48 GP, Timothy McGarden, Adrian 26, and Ellie Ghost 555. They are going to be our 12 finalists progressing through to the grand final event, making their way to Valencia between the 16th and the 18th of November. Absolutely, and that is how we look leaving Madrid for another grand final that promises to be epic. And no doubt it's another live event as well, so it's going to be a good one. Yep, absolutely right, and we'll see you all there. Oh, one more thing, actually, we should probably say goodbye to Alex up in the comments box. Alex, thank you so much for joining us, it's been a pleasure. Thanks to both of you as well. It's been equally a pleasure for myself and now looking forward to finding out who, how our newly confirmed finalists will get on uh, in less than a month's time. Goodbye for now. Thanks for that, Alex, and goodbye for me. It's a pleasure to be here with you as well, Tom, by your side. Well, you're too kind there. Thank you very much, Lisa. <laughs> you're welcome back any time. Just try and do me a favour. Don't take my job just yet, hey? Okay. Anyway, uh, the MotoGP yeah. Grand Final takes place in Valencia between the 16th and 18th of November. Don't miss it. We'll be crowning our second MotoGP eSports World Champion. Thanks so much for joining us. See you then.